Uh, my daughter Phoebe was born with a condition just over 11 years ago and survived three days. Um, my wife and I always wanted a, a large family. Uh, we have a, a son who's 15 now. He was four at the time of Phoebe's birth. And we thought that we were going to have a big bouncing baby girl. Um, that's what the sonographers told us and that's what the midwives had told us. Um, but what we didn't know was that Phoebe was suffering from trisomy 18 or Edward syndrome. And we didn't actually realize that until uh, the moment when the, the surgeon put the uh, scalpel into Gina's tummy and they whipped Phoebe away because there were some uh, conditions that were fairly evident to them at the time that they wanted to investigate further. Um, we got the diagnosis later in the day that she had trisomy 18, but they didn't really elaborate as to what that was. They didn't tell us what the complications might be, just that she had a hole in her heart and a, a, a ruptured diaphragm. Um, her intestines were in her lungs because of that and her lungs hadn't formed properly and she was having difficulty breathing. Um, we weren't told uh, about any of the options for surgery. Um, whether there were any options at all going forward other than the trisomy 18 meant that Phoebe's opportunity for life had diminished substantially since her birth and it was unlikely she would survive any length of time. And the doctors told us all about the difficult decision we would have to make about when we took her off life support and that was the only decision that we had. And on midday on the third day we switched off the, the life support and we had a very little bit of time with Phoebe in her arms and she died there in the family room in her arms. I think Jean and I would very much have liked to have had a lot more of the underlying information. The reasons behind trisomy, what causes it, was it our fault, what are the, the medical conditions that can be addressed from it. The wording used was incompatible with life. And I think that that is remarkably upsetting. I know it was for Jean and I because we didn't really know why it was uh, incompatible with life. Um, the words I would have liked to have heard at the time, which I understand a lot more now, is about the treatment for each individual symptom rather than for the syndrome. So is there an option to repair the hole in her heart? Is there an option to repair uh, the ruptured diaphragm? Different wording, softer wording, something that more accurately reflects the survivability rates of Patau's and Edwards and says that there may be life-limiting conditions within a, a diagnosis um, because not everyone has the same uh, aspect of, of Patau's or, or Edwards. It may have a little bit or they may have a, a lot. The information that I feel that, that parents and prospective parents need to have either on diagnosis or whenever they're about to have their screening tests is uh, all about the syndrome, but not about the condition itself, but about the, the, the associated conditions, the possible things that, that might affect them going forward. The things that the parents are going to have to live with uh, should the child survive into childhood and adulthood. Things like the medical interventions that are available, things like how the child might feed, how they might develop um, mentally. Any restrictions that there may be on there, both positive and negative, I think will be a good balance of information to give. I think that the medical profession who deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis need to take away the fact that they are delivering some life-altering news. And they have to deliver it, ideally, in a compassionate and effective way. Parents are going to be affected by this for the rest of their lives. And if they deliver it in a compassionate and clear way, then everybody will win. Isabel um, is a really happy little girl. She's probably the happiest person I know. Um, she's six and a half now. And for a six and a half year old, she has very delayed development. Um, but actually the most important thing is that she really loves life. So um, she loves going to school, um, she loves her family, she loves her big brother in particular. Um, she can now sit without support for extended periods of time. She can stand with support. She started to use a, a special potty. Um, she can make her needs and wishes known really, really well. Um, she can't talk yet, but we are working on communication methods that help her. Um, she basically just is such a happy little person that's a very important part of our lives.
Isabel at the moment can't do some of the things that you would expect a normal six and a half year old to do. So she can't um, move independently, she can't walk and talk, um, she can't feed herself yet and she can't look after her personal care, she can't get herself on and off the potty for example. Isabel's health is brilliant most of the time um, but if Isabel gets a cold um, or is unwell then she can go downhill very quickly so typically she if she gets a cold she would end up in hospital needing some oxygen and feeding support so life with Isabel um, well we do far more because of Isabel than having Isabel has stopped us doing and she's just a joy and yes it's hard it's not a walk in the park um, the hospital admissions are hard um, the worry is hard, but she brings such joy, such love, such happiness to our whole family that we could never imagine a life without her.